welcome back to Gamer Bargains. We're gonna be shooting this from my phone as you know, uh, I just have a webcam, so I'm gonna be upgrading probably to some kind of a GoPro sometime, sometime to shoot some better footage. But for right now, we're just using my phone. So I told you I had an upcoming video for a Chia Miner, and this is it. This is my $600 Chia Miner I built, and it's, um, that's sort of true for 600 because some of these parts I did have laying around, so they didn't cost me anything. So it's it's a rough $600. If you have some extra computer parts laying around, you can always make a build. Like I had the case, I had a CPU, and I had a power supply. So I just had to buy a motherboard, some hard drives, and some RAM, and I was ready to get up and going. So um, we went with a two terabyte NVMe SSD for our um, our main, uh, you know, uh, initial plotter right here. And then what we're gonna actually keep all of our plots on, um, this is the biggest drive I could get without paying a scalper price right now because of hard drive demand. This is a Seagate Exos uh, eight terabyte enterprise drive. The reason I went with enterprise is because this is designed to be in, um, you know, like a data center or anything like that where they're constantly reading and writing to this. So the drive has a much longer life than a regular desktop hard drive. So that's something to keep in mind when you're working with Chia, that you could have hard drive failures if you pick up the cheaper, just, you know, desktop drives. So, um, well, let's get right into it. All right, everyone. So we have our, um, our motherboard here on top of our motherboard box. So. Like I said, I had a spare CPU. I upgraded from a 1600 AF, which is a six core 12 thread processor, which is right here. Um, because in my rig now I have a 3600X, so I had a spare processor. So I found the cheapest mini ITX um, motherboard I could find that was AM4. That's, you know, uh, second gen Ryzen ready. And um, it does have four SATA ports, so we could we could put a few more drives in here. And it also has an, an, M, an M.2 slot, so extremely useful. It actually has a dual, it has another M.2 underneath here, so it has a dual M.2. We only just have one though. So let's get to work here. The first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna lift up our, our handle here and we're going to get out our CPU. And I've already cleaned all the thermal paste off of this. So we need to look for our triangle, which is over here, and I have the triangle lined up correctly. And then we're gonna seat it in and make sure that she's all nice and square, and she is. So now we're going to lower the retention arm, and there we go. So CPU installed. Now, I have quite a few of these coolers laying around, but this is the one that actually came with the 3600X, it's kind of overkill because this is a humongous cooler for this little 1600AF, but it already has a thermal paste applied on it, so we're just gonna use it. So, to use this particular cooler, you need to take off these mounting points here, and you're gonna wanna keep these mounting points if you ever wanna use this motherboard for something else other than you might need it for a liquid cooler down the road if you want to do that or so if you want to change coolers and use a different cooler it may require that you put these stock brackets back on so just after we're done here we'll put it in our motherboard box that's kind of where you need to put all your important stuff in case you ever need to you know have anything later down the road put our cooler here and we're gonna try and orient it to where it's not really gonna be impeding anything here. And I think we're good. I don't think it's gonna impede our RAM at all. So I think we're okay. This is a humongous cooler for this little guy, but we're just gonna use it cause she already has thermal paste on her. So we're just gonna use it. So once you've firmly Tighten down this, which this is extremely overkill for this little guy, but <laughs> mm -hmm. 
it's fine. It'll serve its purpose here. So, um, it looks like all the cooling fans are off of here, off one side. I was going to see if there was one indirectly right next to our CPU. I'm going to guess it's this one. But I will check the manual later to ensure that I have the right one. But it looks like these are all the fan headers right here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, is we're going to install a RAM. We went with 16 gigs for right now. This is a 6-core 12 thread processor. So if I need 16 more gigs, I'll, I'll go get it. But we're using 16 gigs of team group right now, 3,000 megahertz. We all know that Ryzen loves high-speed memory. So... Um, so the only issue with this is, is if I need 16 more gigs, that means I'm going to have to buy a new kit because this particular kit only has two channels of memory or this board. So I think 16 is going to be just enough for what we want it to do. So. And I'm new to Chia Mining, so I literally have just been watching a few videos online and, you know, seeing what other people do or whatever. And I honestly, you know, I don't know. Everybody seems to have their own, their own point of view, sort of, of what's the best and what's not. I think it's still being figured out, so I don't think anybody has a for sure thing. I think using enterprise drives, though, are a much safer bet because they're meant for long-term usage. So, there. Now we have our 16 gigs of RAM. Now we need to install our um, M.2. So, we have our little... I extremely dislike the M.2 screw. So, now we're going to put in our inland um, MDME with NAND memory, this has read speeds of 3,400 megabytes and write speeds of 3,000 megabytes. It is the two terabyte model. So we are just going to seat it in our M.2. So you just, it sits like this at an angle. You get your little screwdriver here. You push it down and screw it in. Now you don't need to put any kind of pressure. You just wait for it to just stop and it stopped and that's it. So there you go. We've put together our entire motherboard. The next thing we're going to do is, is we're going to put it in the case. We're going to do some cable management and, you know, put the motherboard in and all that stuff. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got our motherboard inside of our case, and then, and then we did our I.O. shield down here. Here, show them down there. There you go, buddy. So I got our I.O. shield in. So now we're going to just screw in the motherboard. There's only, you know, four standoff screws because this is a mini ITX case, so we don't need to adjust our standoffs. They only go... <laughs> They only, they're only for one particular board, so nothing else is gonna fit in here, so <laughs> we're fine right there, so. But we have some fan cables going over. So building in a small chassis like this, you will have cables literally, literally in every which direction, so don't, you know, <laughs> don't worry about it, so. Okay, now we're gonna do some cable management here and get some things hooked up. So just wait one second. We have officially installed everything. So now this isn't a complete like tutorial on how to build a PC. And I did okay on cable management. If you've ever built in one of these little ITX boxes, it is a nightmare. So most of my cables are just shoved right down there in the hole. So um, got some fan wires right here, but I'm not really too worried about it. It's a minor, it's not made to look pretty. Um, so this is going to be just displaying our output. It's a GTX 750 Ti. It's just something I had laying around. So 
I didn't plug in this hard drive yet because, um, well, I guess I could, it doesn't really matter. You could tell how much data is in it for when you're gonna do your Windows installation. So, um, as far as I know, I have everything hooked up correctly. I have my, I have my 24 pin, I have my uh, SATA cable for my hard drive and all that stuff. I have my front panel connectors, I have my USB 3.0, I have my HD audio, I have my graphics card, CPU, all that stuff. So, um,